Hello. In this lesson, we are going to learn how to use non destructive layer masks to montage together several self portraits. Layer masks have a distinct advantage over many other techniques within Photoshop, primarily in the fact that they do not destroy any pixels in the process of editing. Photoshop is a pixel editing tool and it destroys pixels in that process. Of course we're going to start as usual in Bridge. Here I am, I scroll down to the bottom of my window in Bridge and uh, I have some images here that I have shot in advance and in preparation for this class. Now of course I can't find them, there we go, scroll back up, here we are. There's the first image. Um, not quite satisfactory for my needs. Here's the second image that looks okay. Here's the third and this is the fourth. So I'll command click on those three images. They're now all selected. I will then right or control click and I will choose to open in Camera Raw. Camera Raw, doing opening a file in this method allows us to process a file using the raw processor, which is a very powerful tool, regardless of the image file format. For example, many people are shooting in JPEG, which isn't the best way to go, but it's the most obvious way to go most of the time. Pros and cons of that will be discussed in more detail in next week's Photoshop class. Anyway, whether the file's in RAW or not, we will in fact open the files in Camera RAW. Up comes the Camera RAW processor. This is the processor that enables us to process the RAW files. On the left here you can see as I click on each thumbnail, you can see this slightly different image as uh, I moved around while taking the exposures. The camera was on a tripod. I did not move the camera or tripod during the exposure, only myself, and it looks like there was some movement in the clothes as well, which is a, a bit unfortunate, but won't particularly de be detrimental to the final result. Uh, the, the raw processor is a very powerful tool. The first part of it that you'll use is the color sampler tool which is just here and you'll click and take a variety of readings particularly in highlight and shadow areas and the occasional mid-tone and any other area where you want to make uh, a, me a judged measurement of, of the values in your image. Zero in digital terms is pure black and 255 is pure white. Um, you can see that my shadow area up here in the number one reading is 255 pure white there's no detail and in my number two reading over here I'm getting a value of 9, 12 and 12. Uh, this tells me that uh, there's possibly some room for uh, correction in both of these areas. We'll see how we go. The first thing that I'll attempt to do uh, is uh, change the exposure. You can see there are some values in here already. I've opened this file several times in the practical demonstration in class and Photoshop remembers these using a thing called XMP data or a sidecar file. Um, if I pull down this exposure slider for example you'll see uh, some of the numbers are changing, some aren't. The image itself is getting quite dark but I can see, I can begin to see some detail in the highlight areas there in the background. Uh, it may be worth considering for example if I wanted that detail to appear in this image to settle for this level of exposure but uh, this exercise is not about that so I'm going to set that back to zero which seems a bit bright now so perhaps I'll even go back to um, where it was which is something like minus 55 I'll just oh well no that's not what I want either so we'll just drag it back of course I've made an error minus 4 and plus 4 of the regions I'll shift click and go use the arrow keys here to bring that back up and then use the arrow key to go to 0.55 which is where it was originally. Um, the the uh, white balance is set to daylight because I've already opened these images. Uh, by default it, it opens as shot and if you shoot as a JPEG you'll only get um, two options here but because this has been shot at a RAW I get the option to uh, convert them to daylight. If I select all over here, I can make them all daylight as well. And the, the changes I make here will be affected to all three images. I don't want to labor too long on this aspect of the process, but uh, once I'm happy with the ex exposure and the white balance and 
contrast and a few other issues, I then click Open Images. I've already opened Photoshop in advance to try and speed this tutorial up. You can see the mouse is clicking away down there in the bottom as uh, each file now opens. Mm, this is a very memory intensive process. Photoshop loads all the image data into RAM before it even starts working, one of its many faults. I'll just resize the window slightly now and you can see I have a series of tabs, tabs across the top so I click on each tab you can see that the only thing that changes is my position in the frame I need to drag from uh, one image onto the other and it's a little bit difficult with these images arranged this way so to change that I'm going to click, hold and drag on this tab and you can see that the image changes its transparency slightly it's now a separate window to the other two files and I'll repeat the process again drag it down now I have three separate files, but of course they're all buried away under the tool palettes and what have you here. I'm now going to go to Window, Arrange, uh, Tile, and all three images are now available to me here in, on the screen. This is a step that I didn't put in the written instructions, but you can use a variety of ways to show these images all at once. You could have, for example, used the Zoom tool, and with the, the Zoom Out options here chosen up here in the top, I could have zoomed out uh, and all images, all three images would have um, fitted quite nicely, which they have now done. The next tool I'm going to use is the Move tool, the first tool at the top here. Oh, oops, I've clicked out of Photoshop by accident now. I'll click back into Photoshop. There we go. I'll click on the Move tool and I will click on this image here. I'll hold down the Shift key. This is the important aspect of this process. You must hold the Shift key down to keep things registered click, hold and drag and you can see just the faint outline there of the second image as I drag it on top I'll let go of the mouse before the shift key let go of the shift key and now when I click on this image here you can see it's gone from two layers to one turn, I'll turn off the top layer, there you go on and off there's some movement there in the clothes and myself um, this eye icon makes the layer visible or invisible uh, and is a handy, handy way of working out what the hell you're doing. The next step in the process is to go to Layer, Layer Mask, Hide All. I've chosen the Hide All option because it enables me to paint back in what it is that I'm missing from the scene. And you can see now on the Layers palette I have a black mask that is actually hiding this, this, the image pixels here so that I, I can only see the image underneath. If I'm to paint on this mask with a white brush, I will uh, effectively make a hole in it and what is the pixels in this image here on the top will then reappear. So I'll pick up the paintbrush tool, there it is there, and I'll make sure that my default colour is white, which it is. If it's not, you can hit D on the keyboard or you can hit X to switch backwards and forwards between black and white. I'm currently going to paint with white and I can tell by looking at this picture here on the right that I'm not I'm over here somewhere in the image. I'm also going to make the brush bigger. I'll click here on the brush tool. I'll drag the master diameter substantially larger, about 135 pixels will do. I always work with the zero hardness though. A good soft brush is much better and easier to work with in these beginning situations when we first start. So there you go. I'm just rubbing away gently with the white, uh, the brush with set to white and there I am. I've now placed myself in the image to be seen. I'll add the third image now of myself. So I'll click down here on the bottom, hold down, uh, pick up the move to tool first, click, hold down the shift key, click, hold and drag, let go of the mouse, and boom, there I am on the top. I now again go to layer, layer mask, hide all. I disappear making sure that the layer mask is selected here but I can tell it's selected by these white brackets around the outside I will again pick up the paintbrush and I will paint myself onto the seat where I'm sitting and I'm going to actually make a deliberate mistake here to demonstrate a quick point as well in a couple of spots here, there we go I am now sitting in the chair but I deliberately went over my leg there and over my elbow. 
the reason I did that is to show you how to erase and put back what it is that you've done in the mask. I'm going to flick from white to black by clicking here. I could have just as easily used the X key. You can see the colors changing backwards and forwards down the bottom here in this foreground swatch. X for black, uh, and it switches back to white. So I'm on black, and I'm going to paint my leg back in there on the mask. There it is. And I'll also paint in my elbow. Uh, and there you have it. Just to make things a little more accurate, I'll click on the zoom tool. I'll choose the zoom in option here in the options palette. I'll click, hold and drag over this area of the image and have a close look to see what's going on. I'll pick up the hand tool here by clicking here. The shortcut is H or the space bar. And I can see that I've missed my hand here, for example, and I need to tidy up around my, the back of my leg. So I'm going to zoom in again a little more. Click on the zoom tool. Click once to zoom a little further. Pick up my paintbrush tool. I'm now going to make the brush a little smaller so that it's not uh, as big and chunky. There we go, I might even go a little smaller again than that, 73, let's go down to about 50 or so. There we go, hit return on the keyboard to get rid of that. And, oops, I painted with black, hit X to paint with white, and I'll paint my hands back in. There we go, my hands are now in the image correctly. Um, and I can see I missed a bit on my shirt there because I've used a really large brush. I'll use the space bar to bring up the hand tool and just examine that part of myself fairly quickly. What I'll also do is just quickly close these two images so they don't use up too much RAM. Close, don't save, close, don't save. I'll grab the bottom corner of the document window, stretch it out a little. Space bar, move the image down. Just have a quick look at my work. I can see I've missed a bit over my head here and a bit on the leg. So I will zoom in even further, click on the zoom tool, click hold and drag over this area here. Space bar, brings up the hand tool, there I go. Brush, there it is. The square bracket keys allow me to quickly and easily make the brush smaller. I'll just paint my shoe in a bit better there. Go a bit smaller again. And there we have it, I've tidied up that area. I'll now hold the space bar and go back up over to my head here. I seem to remember there was a problem here. This is on layer one, the area that I need to work in. I'll just paint in my elbow there, for example. I missed a bit there, and the edges of my uh, jeans. There we go. And it doesn't look like I missed too much else there. I'll just quickly check around. Um, everything else looks okay, other than the fact that I never smile in photos. Uh, double click the hand tool and it zooms out to fill the frame. There's the finished results. I will of course now save this work, file, save as, and I will put it in my documents folder, 2010, VU, teaching aids, and I've probably already got a version of it here, so I'll call it um, screencast self portrait. And then you'll notice I'm saving it as a Photoshop file and I'm turning on the icons here. I'm embedding the color profile sRGB. I'll click save. I'll click this is a default option, just OK that every time it comes up. Click OK. It chugs away now. Uh, and it saves that file in this particular format. I've chosen this for a reason. Those layer masks will exist forever there and they can be edited forever where they are if I make change my mind about the position of myself or some other aspect of these layer masks. I can continue to edit these ad infinitum as Photoshop files. Once I save this as a JPEG, those layers will be flattened and uh, I'll no longer be able to be edited separately. So now we're going to prepare it for the web. The first thing I need to do is to make it the correct size. So I'll go to image, image size. My camera shoots at a res resolution of 240, so I'll uncheck the resample image lower this value to 75 and click OK. The second step, image, image size, turn on resample image, change the width value to 1024 which is more than adequate for places like Flickr. I click OK and this time it will actually shrink in the window chunk, there it is, it's disappeared. It's all ready to go. Uh, I'll now go file, save as and this time I'll change the format 
to JPEG, but before I do that, I need to make sure that I'm in the right mode. At the moment here, you can see at the end of the file, it says 16. That tells me I'm in 16-bit mode. I need to change that by going to image mode, 8 bits per channel. Now the number says 8. Now I can go file, save as, and this time I'll be able to choose the JPEG format for Flickr. Uh, screencast self-portrait, and I'll type the word flattened at the end just to give me some clue as to what's going on here. I'll click save, embed the colour profile, and turn on the icon and thumbnail, I'll click save. Uh, Photoshop asks me what level of compression do I wish to apply to this image. I tend to leave these at maximum, however I have a paid account on Flickr, uh, and it doesn't matter how big the files are that I upload in terms of digital data. This is currently a one megabyte file. If I change the compression algorithm to medium, you can see the file size shrinks, shrinks quite dram dramatically. In fact, I'll just cancel out of that and quickly grab the bottom of the document window. And here I'll change the uh, information in the bottom of the window and show you the document size. It's currently uh, 8.64 megabytes, uh, and um, if I flattened it, it would become 2.25 megabytes. So you'll see very quickly when I go File, Save As, and change the format to JPEG. Uh, and as I said, I'll just type in on the end here, flattened, so that I know what's going on. I'll click Save. And on uh, the maximum level of compression, or sorry, that's a bit of a misnomer. It's actually the minimum amount of compression and the maximum amount of quality. I have a one megabyte file, so it's gone from 2.25 to one megabytes. Well, if I go to medium, you can see that it's now 213 kilobytes, a quarter of that size, and eight times smaller than this size. I'll, I'll settle for high, which is sort of halfway between, it's a little nice compromise. In fact, I'll punch in 10. I like, I like to work in round figures, there we go. And it's now five, one quarter of the 2.2 megabytes in size. It's been compressed data has been lost. This is the last step that I do in the process. I will do no more editing on the on this flattened file. Click OK and there it is all done. File and close. It says you want to save changes and I say no because I already saved a format as Photoshop. So that's how we produce a montage using uh, Photoshop uh, and non-destructive layer masks. This is the JPEG, the finished product. You can see the layers all flattened here. I can no longer edit the individual layers. And in fact, I was to continue to work on this, I would lose more data in the, in the JPEG saving process. Uh, have a go at that. Let me know what you think. Uh, more screencasts to come as uh, the holidays progress and I think about things that need to be done. Enjoy.